Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless there is a coming world dictator known as the antichrist who is foretold of in the bible who in the near future will control a worldwide government a worldwide monetary system and a worldwide religion he will use surveillance technology to control the peoples of the world is he living now probably is the Antichrist already working behind the scenes to bring about his plan for world economic and political domination? It seems so. From all indications, the Antichrist satanic technology-based system is already being set in place. He will use technology to achieve and enforce his near total control of the world and its people, and they don't even see it coming. Revelation 13, 16 through 18. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. The future's now, and I am freaking out. Neuralink, Elon Musk's brain tech company, has implanted a microchip into a human brain. The goal is to help blind and disabled people walk and see again, which we support. But this is giving me Fauci vibes, since the mad scientist at Davos already fantasized about mind control. Rather than a mouse or a keyboard, you can simply swipe with your mind. We can pick up emotional states, like are you happy or sad or angry? We can pick up and decode faces that you're seeing in your mind. Simple shapes, numbers, your PIN number to your bank account. Uh, count me out of getting manipulated by a computer chip in my brain. I've already had enough of my parents telling me what to do my whole life. I don't need Dr. Evil with a joystick turning me into a puppet. How about instead of connecting to a one world supercomputer, we just go back to connecting with each other in the flesh and in nature, not stuck with wires and chips sitting alone at home while they extract my soul. When you let them put a microchip in your brain, you're saying I submit. For the first time in history, it's possible to completely eliminate privacy. Monitoring everybody all the time and knowing everything you do, and not just everything you do, but even everything you, you think. God is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. God is omniscient. He is all-knowing. God is omnipresent. He is present everywhere. Satan, in sharp contrast, does not reflect these divine attributes. Satan is very powerful, more than any man. And more powerful than most angels. Satan wants to be like God and even exalts himself above God, as we read in Isaiah 14, 12 through 14. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Satan is not anywhere near to being equal with God. The only way Satan can be all-powerful, all-knowing, and present everywhere at once is through technology. When the Antichrist comes on the scene, he will undoubtedly use this type of technology as part of the beast system. Bank of England already prepared their microchip implant RFID chip to be implanted under your skin. Through wearables and other advances in this technology that people will be increasingly connected to this uh, you know, extreme connectivity that does sort of merge humans and machines. Now, I don't want to be a cyborg. I want to be Jesse Waters. I don't want to march into an Apple store so they can make me a slave. It's a slow death march. We've watched it. First, it was computers. They were exciting, but we weren't really relying on them. We could get up and leave. Then it was smartphones, which were better, but you could turn them off. Then came smart watches, smart goggles. You can always take those off, I guess. Chip, however, permanent. They turn you into a 24-7 consumer where they buy and sell your thoughts and feelings and force you to shop until you drop. I guarantee Wall Street 
is going to start trading emotions next decade. I hope you see where this is all going. Society is fast moving toward the mark of the beast. As smart devices continue to advance, going from your phone to your watch, the next logical place will be in or on your right hand or forehead. This is the future the Bible has been warning about. We have arrived. The Bible gives us the most dire warning to those who take the mark of the beast and worship his image in Revelation 14, 9 through 11. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast in his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. The first of God's bold judgments is aimed specifically at those who take the mark of the beast and worship his image as we read in Revelation 16, 1 and 2. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth. And a foul and loathsome sword came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. 1 John 2.18 Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. Very exciting news out of the States. Elon Musk has announced his brain chip factory called Neuralink, which he founded himself, has just implanted the first brain chip in a human. He tweeted today the first human received an implant from Neuralink yesterday and is recovering well. Initial results show promising neuron spike detection. Well, we have exclusive footage today, ladies and gentlemen, of said human post-operation recovering well. They created me to retrieve data from a computer system here in the city. We're going to be cyborgs. It's all just a matter of time. You can get add-ons now. Just go to Neuralink. I mean, imagine being the first person to put up your hand and be like, yeah, OK, I'll be the guinea pig. Give it a go. <laughs> it's it's pretty amazing individual. technology. I mean, it'll help quadriplegics control yeah. devices with their thoughts. But I'm just wondering if we like Tesla where, you know, you've got 22,000 people recalled because there's something wrong with the <laughs> software and they've got to do an upgrade. And, and I can see the medical use for it if we're talking about people who are quadriplegic mm. and, and can finally have some, you know, autonomy because of it. But Elon Musk has already said that he wants to achieve a symbiosis with artificial technology, mm. artificial intelligence, sorry. Mm. So what he's ultimately talking about is you, anyone could have a chip put in their brain and start talking to computers and altering your thoughts and doing all sorts of things. Again, I mean, we talk about being beholden to technology in terms of banks if you, you can't get any cash out because the uh, telecommunication systems have gone down. Imagine if we're all walking around with brain chips and someone hacks into that system. I mean, the things they could do to you are just absurd. Well, loving uh, for his freedom of speech stances and thank God he bought Twitter, but he's always been a very passionate transhumanist, yeah. always. But where this is going to go, I mean, the transgender debate is what constitutes a man or a woman. The transhuman debate is going to be what constitutes a human being. God help mm. us. Through wearables and other advances in this technology that people will be increasingly connected to this, you know, extreme connectivity that does sort of merge humans and machines. Is artificial intelligence and transhumanism in Bible prophecy? And what is artificial intelligence and transhumanism? Artificial intelligence is the capability of a machine to imitate intelligent human behavior. Transhumanism is the belief or theory that the human race can evolve beyond its current physical and mental limitations, especially by means of science and technology. In the last days, the book of Daniel prophesied that knowledge would increase. Daniel 12.4 But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. There are many prophecies in Daniel's time that could not come to fulfillment because the technology had not yet been invented. That is why Daniel was told to shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. In our time, the time of the end, we are witnessing the technology that will bring about the end of days, climaxing in the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Daniel 12, 9 and 10. And he said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified, made white, and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand but the wise shall understand. 
Just as Daniel recognized Jeremiah's prophecy that the end of Israel's 70-year Babylonian captivity was near, the wise in our time are recognizing the signs of the times given in Bible prophecy that the time of Jesus' return is near. Matthew 24, 21, and 22 For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Flesh is the Greek word sarx, which means flesh, body, human nature, especially a human being. Matthew 24, 22 can be translated like this. And unless those days were shortened, no human nature would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. If Jesus did not return and shorten the days, there would be no human nature saved. Either mankind will merge with artificial intelligence, or artificial intelligence will completely destroy mankind as the dominant species. Daniel 2.28 But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. From King Nebuchadnezzar's dream, Daniel prophesied of five world empires to emerge from that time forward. The Babylonian Empire, succeeded by the Medo-Persian Empire, succeeded by the Grecian Empire, succeeded by the Roman Empire, succeeded by the last days empire of the Antichrist. Daniel's interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's dream about a statue is rather straightforward until you get to verse 43. Daniel 2.43 As you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. Seed is the Hebrew word zera, which means posterity. Definition of posterity is future generations. Daniel 2.43 can be translated like this. As you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the future generations of men, but they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. In these end times, is it possible Daniel's prophecy of a world empire of iron mixed with clay was a prophecy of a time when humanity, clay, and its inventions, machines of iron, would become so intermingled as to become nearly identical, but never able to fully become one? In these very end times, scientists are now able to implant men with brain chips and other parts that indeed make them part machine. The mingling has come to the point that men have invented robots empowered by artificial intelligence while implanting machine parts, iron, into men, clay. Daniel 2.44 and 45 And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall not be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Inasmuch as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God has made it known to the king what will come to pass after this. The dream is certain, and its interpretation is sure. Jesus Christ, the stone, will return and destroy this last day's empire of the Antichrist, and his kingdom will stand forever. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. President Biden says the U.S. is ready to strike back against the terror groups that killed three American service members. The strikes on multiple targets could come at any time and last over several days. The fighting in Israel continues on several fronts in Gaza, along the Lebanese border, and extending to the biblical lands of Judea and Samaria. Chris Mitchell reports on the conflict from Jerusalem. Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant warned on Monday that the window for a diplomatic solution with Lebanon is closing. There will be a stage when our patience will run out and our ability to contain this matter will expire. And as a result of this, we may end up with forceful action. Hezbollah, Iran's largest proxy in the region, has been waging a low-scale war against Israel on its northern border since just after the October 7th Hamas attack. Galan said Israel's home front is preparing for war 
and warned Lebanon. What you saw in Gaza can be copied to Lebanon, and the Air Force dedicates a small part of its force to Gaza. It keeps a large part of its force on standby. In order to deal with a northern scenario, I hope we don't get to this situation, but we are prepared in this matter. The fighting also spreading to Judea and Samaria, also known as the West Bank, where Israeli forces carried out a raid in a hospital in Jenin. Hospital security camera footage shows disguised undercover Israeli agents entering the hospital. Officials say they killed three Hamas terrorists on the verge of launching a terror attack. Afterwards, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu met with IDF troops in the area and told them Judea and Samaria is a critical front in the war. This is an arena that is not just important, it is super important. I know that you invest in it, both in defense and attack. It seems to me that since the beginning of this year, even more so, of course, since the beginning of the war, half a thousand terrorists have already been eliminated here, and there's more to be done, including today in Janine. At the White House today, Strategic Affairs Minister Ron Dermer will meet with National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan to discuss the ongoing war and negotiations to secure the release of the remaining hostages. In the meantime, President Biden says he's decided how to respond to Sunday's deadly attack on U.S. troops in Jordan. This morning, the Pentagon locking in plans for an imminent counterattack on Iranian-backed militants in the Middle East. Yes. Retaliation for that deadly drone strike on a remote U.S. base here in Jordan that killed three American soldiers and wounded 40. A senior official telling ABC News that the operation will last several days and hit multiple deliberate targets, including facilities that enabled the initial attack, most of them inside Syria, even though the commander in chief made it clear he blames Iran. I do hold respons them responsible in the sense that they're supplying the weapons to the people who did it. Another official says the president is unlikely to order any strikes inside Iran over concern it could expand the conflict. But Iranian assets outside its borders are still possible targets. The president is still wary of a growing conflict. I don't think we need a wider war in the Middle East. He was pressed by NBC's Gabe Gutierrez whether he blames Iran for the attacks. I do hold response, them responsible in the sense that they're supplying the weapons to the people of Libya. But a different group, supported by Iran, striking the U.S. again overnight. The Houthis firing an anti-ship cruise missile towards the Red Sea, shot down by a U.S. destroyer, the USS Gravely, the Pentagon says. Tensions and the fallout from the war in Gaza growing on multiple fronts. Iran has released a new warning this morning about any potential retaliatory attack from the U.S. What have you heard? The commander of Iran's Revolutionary Guard saying, quote, we hear threats coming from American officials. We tell them that we've already te they've already tested us and we now know one another. No threat will be left unanswered. U.S. officials telling NBC News that the targets have not yet been uh, finalized. But Savannah, underscoring the multidimensional nature of the challenge here for President Biden, the director of the CIA, saying this week that the crisis in Gaza, he believes, has emboldened Iran. As we continue to watch the Muslim world unite against Israel, the Bible tells us there are four possible prophecies on the verge of finding fulfillment. Isaiah 17, 1 and 14, the burden against Damascus. Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city, and it will be a ruinous heap. Then behold, at eventide, trouble, and before the morning he is no more. This is the portion of those who plunder us, and the lot of those who rob us. Isaiah 17.9 In that day his strong cities will be as a forsaken bow, and an uppermost branch, which they left because of the children of Israel, and there will be desolation. Isaiah 17, 1 and 14 tell us Damascus will be destroyed in a single night. Verse 9 suggests it is the children of Israel who caused this desolation, possibly with a nuclear weapon. Jeremiah 49, 34 through 37. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet against Elam. In the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the foremost of their might. Against Elam I will bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven and scatter them toward all those winds. There shall be no nations where the outcasts of Elam will not go. For I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies and before those who seek their life. I will bring disaster upon them 
my fierce anger, says the Lord, and I will send the sword after them until I have consumed them. In this prophecy, Jeremiah predicts that Iran will be struck at the foremost place of its might, which today could infer an attack upon its nuclear program. One of Iran's most strategic and vulnerable nuclear targets is Bashar nuclear reactor located in the heart of ancient Elam. Jeremiah says that Iran has fiercely angered the Lord, and that provokes the Lord to cause a severe disaster inside of Iran. Israel seeks to prevent Iran from becoming a nuclear nation. Perhaps this alludes to a nuclear disaster caused from a strike upon Iran's Boucher nuclear reactor. There is a prophecy written by Asaph the seer that many end-time teachers believe has yet to find fulfillment. In this prophecy, a confederation of Muslim nations have taken crafty counsel against the Jewish people in Israel in order to destroy them as we read in Psalm 83, 1-8. Do not keep silent, O God. Do not hold your peace and do not be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make a tumult, and those who hate you have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted together against your sheltered ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. For they have consulted together with one consent. They form a confederacy against you. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagrites, Gabal, Ammon, and Amalek, Philistia with the inhabitants of Tyre, Assyria also has joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot. Ezekiel 38, 1-9 The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn you about and put hooks into your jaws, and I will bring you out and all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed in full armor, a great host, all of them with buckler and shield, wielding swords, Persia, Cush, and Put are with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his hordes, Beth Garma from the uttermost parts of the north with all his hordes. Many peoples are with you. Be ready and keep ready, you and all your hosts that are assembled about you, and be a guard for them. After many days you will be mustered. In the latter years you will go against the land that is restored from war, the land whose people were gathered from many peoples upon the mountains of Israel, which had been a continual waste. Its people were brought out from the peoples and now dwell securely, all of them. You will advance, coming on like a storm, you will be like a cloud covering the land, you and all your hordes, and many peoples with you. These are the modern day nations listed in Ezekiel 38 and 39 who will be mustered in the latter years to attack Israel, Russia, Iran, Turkey, Libya, Sudan, and Ethiopia. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12, And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. We are back with a travel alert as millions book their spring getaways. The State Department has issued a new warning for the Bahamas. Victor Kendo has the story. This morning, a new warning as many Americans seek to trade frigid temperatures and snow for a tropical oasis. The State Department issuing a level two travel advisory for the Bahamas after reports of at least 18 murders in Nassau this year alone. Officials warning that gang crime is happening in both tourist and non-tourist areas, even in broad daylight. The victims, primarily locals. The State Department also urging travelers to be vigilant when staying at short-term vacation rental properties where private security companies do not have a presence. The travel warnings due to crime stretch across the West Indies, with level two advisories in both the Dominican Republic and Turks and Caicos. Tourists asked to reconsider travel to Jamaica altogether, where there is currently a level three advisory. Six people have been found dead in a remote desert area of California. The bodies were found near San Bernardino County and the community of El Mirage. 
Authorities say that a massive investigation is now underway. This happened about 90 miles northeast of Los Angeles in a desolate area, and the aerial footage shows a grisly scene. Two vehicles parked near these bodies, the windows blown out, five bodies found last night with gunshot wounds, a sixth discovered this morning. Currently, the FBI and ATF are not investigating, but local San Bernardino County authorities are investigating this as a homicide. As yet, it is unclear who these people were or why they were killed, but certainly a grim scene that will be investigated. The Apostle Paul, in his epistle to Timothy, tells us in the last days society will be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5 But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. It's a shocking video, a woman clinging to the hood of a car as thieves speed off with her one-year-old French bulldog. I said, this is it, this is how I'm gonna die. Ali Zacharias miraculously survived, saying she fell off two blocks later as she watched the dog nappers drive away with little Onyx. We're eating right here. Outside the Whole Foods in downtown Los Angeles, where the terrifying incident unfolded, Zacharias described to us the moments a woman stole him and ran to a getaway car. My only recourse was to stop the car, so I stood in front of the car and I put my hands out and I said, stop. I said, do not go. And I didn't think that they'd drive into a human. The next thing I know, they like drove into me and like banged me and like so I fell on the hood. This all happened right here at this intersection, and it's part of a disturbing trend. These prized French bulldogs snatched from their owners, often then sold on the black market. In 2021, Lady Gaga's two Frenchies were taken after shooting her dog walker. The dogs found after she offered a $500,000 reward for their safe return. And just last November, thieves stole a dozen puppies worth $100,000 from an L.A. pet store. French Bulldogs, the number one dog breed in America, cost between three dollars to $9,000, some even more. Were you aware that people often target these dogs when you've got Yes, but I never thought it would be me. I never thought that this would be my situation. Onyx now a statistic, with Zacharias still praying he'll be returned. Fort Worth police say a naked man beat a delivery driver to death in front of a home while that driver was delivering firewood. 27-year-old Chrysanis Omande is in jail, charged with murder. Police say after the brutal attack, he threatened a second person. The victim, Mr. Jackson, he was just doing his job. He was dropping off firewood at a home in Fort Worth. That homeowner came outside to help him unload the firewood. The homeowner was able to escape the attack. He tells us the suspect was acting belligerent and violent. My daughter was talking yesterday about how he would bring her donuts every morning and so bad I just wanted to walk through the door with, with donuts. Neighbors tell me Omandi had just checked into the Airbnb a few days before the murder took place. He does have a criminal history including evading arrests and also last year he was accused of holding a security guard at gunpoint here in Tarrant County. One of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of wickedness and violence that is sweeping the world today. Jesus tells us when society parallels the days of Noah, he will return as we read in Matthew 24, 37-39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So what was going on in Noah's day that parallels our day? To find out the answer, we need to go back to the book of Genesis 6, 5-13. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, 
and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. There is no doubt about the hour in which we live being the season for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ as we link Matthew 24, verses 12 and 37 through 39 with 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. The Bible describes our day very clearly from these scriptures. The condition of wickedness and violence that caused the earth to be destroyed in Noah's day is the same condition our earth is in today. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world, as we know it, is near. For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, Repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.